In this clip, we see Mustangs from the 7th Air Forces engaging in aerial combat with Japanese aircraft. The combat effectiveness of a weapon system is based on its purpose, like the number of rounds to shoot down an aircraft safe for an anti-aircraft gun. The combat effectiveness of a bomber is defined as the tonnage of bombs striking the target per bombers lost, as discussed on this page from a September 1945 SINPAC document titled Flak Intelligence Memorandum No. 9. This value can be used to compare the combat effectiveness of bombers side by side when exposed to a similar environment. This value for the B-17 equates to 192.6 tons per aircraft lost, while the value for the B-24 is 106.5 tons per aircraft lost, as shown on this page from a 1947 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Bombing Accuracy, USAAF Heavy and Medium Bombers, ETO. Based on this data, we can justify the statement. The B-17 is 81% more combat effective than the B-24. Other bombing parameters such as bomb accuracy, vulnerability to damage, ease of liability, accident rate, water ditching qualities, crew preference, and unit cost are either buried into the combat effectiveness parameter or are of secondary importance. We covered these parameter comparisons in these two channel videos. The purpose of U.S. fighters is to destroy Axis fighters and protect U.S. bombers if on escort duty, as defined in this 1945 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Report on Armaments in the Air War, 1939-1945. There are many discussions, debates regarding the combat effectiveness of U.S. fighters in YouTube videos, internet chat rooms, and World War II forums by comparing the fighter speed, climb rate, roll rate, armaments range, unit cost, number of kills, and so on. The best single measurement of the combat effectiveness of a fighter is its air-to-air -air kill ratio, as discussed on this page from a 1982 Navy Space Systems report titled Reflections and Opinions Past and Future Warfare, where the fighter's kill ratio is defined as the number of enemy aircraft destroyed in air-to-air engagements versus the fighter's own loss during the engagement. Just like the bomber's scorecard, the other comparison parameters are buried into the kill ratio value or are of secondary importance. This kill ratio should include enemy aircraft destroyed while in air-to-air -air engagements and exclude air-to-ground kills. This page from a 1945 Statistical Summary 8th Air Forces document defines what constitutes destroyed aircraft. This includes the plane, seen to crash, seen to disintegrate in the air or be enveloped by flames, land in friendly territory and be captured, pilot or crew bailed out. Be aware that credited kills likely have some error as duplicate and or overclaim kills are baked into the databases. This page from a 1945 8th Air Force tactical development document indicates fighter claims are closer to reality than bomber claims. This is due to gun camera footage. Fighter claims are closer to the truth. This source from a 1945 document titled A History, 8th USAAF Fighter Command, indicates kill credits that are based on gun camera footage evaluations are estimated to be within 90% of actual kills. Gun camera footage or witnesses are needed to validate a claim into a credit as discussed in this 1978 USAF credit for the destruction of enemy aircraft World War II document. Squaring up credited claims with actuals will likely never be resolved. A large effort would be needed to compare documented Axis losses for U.S. claims for all engagements. Specific battle spot checks have shown U.S. overclaim errors to be larger than 10%. At the start of hostilities, it was expected that one German fighter was combat equivalent to 1.25 U.S. fighters as defined in this Army Air Force's requirements for AWPD-42 document, where Germany would lose 0.8 fighters for every U.S. fighter lost. So which World War II U.S. fighter is considered the most combat effective, where combat effectiveness is based on its kill ratio? The answer should be based on primary source model losses and kill credits. This should be simple, right? Just rank the fighters based on kill ratio and read off the plane at the top of the list. The ranking should not be affected by overclaims if the overclaim errors are consistent from one model to another. This letter response dated November 1981 from the U.S. Navy Air Systems Command Headquarters discusses their justification for claiming the F-6F Hellcat as the most effective U.S. World War II naval fighter. The table attached was provided to address the combat effectiveness of Navy aircraft. It represents U.S. Navy combat data where the significant columns represent the aircraft model and type, number of credited and bomber fighter kills, Navy plane losses during air-to-air -air engagements, and the model's kill ratio. This table is considered the gold standard of primary source material. A platinum standard would be the table where all kills have been cross-checked with Japanese sources. To my knowledge, this database does not exist. 
The F-6F Hellcat shot down 5,163 planes at a loss of 270 Hellcats for a kill ratio of 19.1 to 1. The F-4U Corsairs shot down 2,138 planes at a loss of 189 Corsairs for a kill ratio of 11.3 to 1. This data shows a Hellcat to be a more effective fighter than the Corsairs by its 69% higher kill ratio. The statement is justified if both planes engaged a similar enemy threat. When comparing the Hellcat to the Corsair, the Hellcat had a superior record. All qualifications aside, the Hellcat outperformed the other Navy fighters. These two responses, one from the Navy Air Systems Command and one from the U.S. Marine Corps History and Museums Division, also confirm the F-6F Hellcat is considered the most combat-effective Navy fighter in World War II based on its kill ratio. Significant document points include, no question the Hellcat had a significant edge over the Corsair as the most combat-effective Navy fighter in World War II. The U.S. Marine Corps lists Hellcats and Corsairs as the most combat-effective fighters with overall kill ratios of 19 to 1 and 11 to 1, respectively. They also state that they possess data showing the P-47 to be the most effective U.S. Air Forces fighter in World War II. I could not locate the source of this claim. The story now gets messy when tracking down U.S. Army Air Force's World War II fighter kills and losses. This response from a 1980 Office of the Air Force History Letter responds to the question as to the most combat effective U.S. Air Force's fighter in World War II. The Air Force cannot locate data with regard to the number of combat kills and losses per fighter. These statistics were never compiled during the war. Given the numerous fighter models and enemy aircraft types, no comparisons were made during the war, nor have any been tabulated since. This page from the Maxwell Air Force Base Historical Research Center addresses the availability of World War II U.S. fighter kill ratio data. This data would need to take into account the mission type and pilot proficiency. Aerial victory credits were based on the pilot without listing the aircraft flown. Since pilots often transitioned aircraft, it would be difficult to identify the plane type to a documented credit. There is no Air Force consensus as to the most effective U.S. fighter in World War II. The World War II Statistical Digest document does not list the losses or claims by fighter type. This is an example page from the 1945 Army Air Force's Statistical Digest in World War II. This table provides fighter losses from air-to-air -air engagements by month and year. The database does not provide losses based on fighter model, just lumps the P-51, P-47, and P-38 together. Same story for fighter credits, no model-specific information provided. This correspondence recommends to extract model-specific kill credits and losses. You are welcome to come down to our research facilities at Maxwell Air Force Base and pour over our records. I poked around at a few other archive documents like this aircraft attrition table for the P-38 and P-51. It does not show losses from air-to-air -air engagements versus anti-aircraft versus operational. Or the 7th Air Force P-47 combat data that does not distribute the causes of the 27 P-47s destroyed or damaged on combat missions as enemy aircraft, anti-aircraft, or other. We do not have any primary source data that can be used to justify the most combat effective U.S. Air Force fighter based on its kill ratio. We need to rely on secondary sources. Unfortunately, no two databases will match kill ratios. Every research will evaluate the data with their own criteria. This table from an 8th Air Force Summary of Combat Operations document tries to address the kill ratios of the Thunderbolts, Lightnings, and Mustangs deployed in the 8th Air Forces in Europe. The table was compiled based on databases from Maxwell Air Force Base, Roger Friedman's book, The Mighty Eighth, Kent Miller's book, Fighter Units and Pilots of the 8th Air Force, the author's own research, with assistance from Frank Olnick. The reader is cautioned that the table is not necessarily complete or an exact accounting of the losses and kills. The kill ratios for this table do trend with other databases, where the kill ratio is highest for the Mustang at 10.2, next to Thunderbolt at 7.2, and Lightning at 2.8. In summary, the combat effectiveness of a fighter is defined by its kill ratio. U.S. fighter overclaims are less than bombers, and if validated by camera footage, are likely closer to reality. U.S. Navy plane-specific kill ratios are well documented, where Navy historians list the F-6F Hellcat as the most effective World War II Navy fighter with its impressive 19-to-1 kill ratio. The most effective U.S. Army Air Force's fighter is not so clear-cut given. Primary source airplane model, fighter loss, and kill credits were not collected or available. And Air Force historians indicate there's no agreement as to the most effective fighter in World War II. Secondary source kill ratios do trend consistently with P-51 on the top with a kill ratio around 10 to 1, then the Thunderbolt, and then the Lightning. 
channel commentary, given the different enemy oppositions encountered and lack of primary source Air Force data, it would be difficult to name the most combat-effective U.S. fighter of World War II. However, if the channel is forced to select one, I pick the... If you've enjoyed this World War II Most Combat Effective U.S. Fighter Deep Dive Review, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.